Today's video is going to be about PCR cleanup. But first of all, I uh, just want to thank you all for tuning in. And secondly, I just want to mention that for my next video, I'm going to show you guys how you can test meats at home. Yeah, that is right, meat. So because of ethical reasons, I have decided not to eat mammals anymore. So uh, I will not eat pork, beef, sheep, goat, and, and, and so on. But that's beside the point. Make sure you stay, uh, you stay tuned in and press the subscribe button if you want to see that video. But for right now, PCR cleanup. So as you can see in this gel right here, I have two gels actually. Uh, one is before cleaning and one is after cleaning. So what I did, I basically PCR the gene, the GBA gene that I plan to use for cloning in one of my plasmids. Uh, however, I have a problem here. Because as you can see, besides the, the correct amplicon right here, I do have four tiny fragments right here, which are basically non-specific amplification. So before cloning, I need to get rid of these fragments. Otherwise, these fragments will get cloned instead of the correct one. And I will have many, many problems uh, downstream. So I can basically do this using two methods. Number one, which is the most known one, is going to be gel extraction. But gel extraction, out of my own experience at least, is notoriously unreliable. It doesn't matter if you follow the steps correctly, the yield, regardless of the manufacturer of the kit you are using, whether it is Kiagen, Neb, Zymo, and so on, so the yield is basically trash. Of course, your experience may vary. Besides the, the, the yield, for gel extraction, you are also going to need a pretty decent laboratory scale, a performance one, just so you can measure the, uh, the agarose uh, you are melting. And of course, you're going to need a thermoblock to melt that agarose. That won't be a problem per se. If you have like, I don't know, a PCR, you could uh, get around it uh, somehow. But yeah, so... I started not liking gel extraction too much anymore. One uh, alternative method is by using magnetic or to be more specific, paramagnetic beads for gel extraction. So the principle is the following. You have uh, some beads that uh, are affected by an external magnetic field. So your DNA gets bound to those beads. And when you are exposing them to a magnetic field, those beads uh, stick to the wall of the tube or the, the plate you're using, right? Thus allowing you to basically clean and elute the, the, the DNA. The advantages of this method, method uh, in my opinion at least, is that you get higher yields, get less shearing of the molecule you're uh, extracting, whether it is protein, DNA, RNA, and so on and you need much less equipment to, to, to do this. What you will need is the magnetic beads from a supplier, which you can buy in bulk, and you would need a magnetic rack. But magnetic racks are DUIable, so you would need a magnet, and you can DUI this yourself in tons of, uh, um, in tons of ways. For this video, I'm going to use my own magnetic racks, which, shameless plug, I do also sell, but the principle basically remain, remains the same. So, uh, without further ado, let me show you what I'm going to do today. So, I do have two fragments right here. As you can see, the correct one, but I also have this tiny fragment of about 200 base pairs right here. So, because in cloning, uh, small fragments tend to get cloned more efficiently than large flag fragments, I am going to have problems if I introduce this into my cloning reaction. So I get, need to get rid of this fragment right here. So let me show you how exactly you can do this and uh, see how it goes. So firstly, I took 20 microliters from my PCR reaction. I 
I then transferred those 20 microliters to the reaction tube. I then added the beads to the tube. I'm using high prep Mac Biogenomics beads here. So after mixing the beads very well by pipetting, I've added 16 microliters of beads to the 20 microliters of the PCR reaction. So this will allow me to separate the small fragments from the larger ones. I use the 0.8 to 1 ratio, beads to DNA. I then had to mix the beads with the DNA by pipetting. Then I incubated them for 3 minutes. So this step will allow the DNA to bind to the beads. While my beads were incubating, I needed to make an 80% ethanol solution. I did this by mixing 200 microliters of water with 800 microliters of pure ethanol. This is the solution I'm gonna need for washing the beads. Now that the beads have finished incubating, I had to place them on the magnetic rack for the separation. As you can see the DNA that is bound to the magnetic beads goes to the side of the tube. I then remove the liquid from the tube, leaving the beads untouched. And then came the washing step. With the beads still attached to the rack, I added 200 microliters of the wash solution. I did not mix the beads or disturb them. I then incubated for 30 seconds. After the 30 seconds, I made sure to remove all the liquid. I did not disturb the beads in any way. I've repeated this wash step one more time. After carefully removing the liquid, I had to dry the beads for about 10 minutes. After the drying step was over, I had to uh, add 25 microliters of water to the mix, mix it and incubate it for 2 minutes.
As a last step, I had to place the magnetic beads on the rack again. After the solution clears and the beads remain stuck to the wall of the tube, all of my clean PCR products will remain in the clear solution. So I can easily extract the DNA by just extracting the solution from the tube itself. After doing all of this, of course, I had to put the PCR product on a gel, and these are the results I got. As you can see, I've managed to get rid of the unwanted PCR product.